The question that started it all was, can the processes of language and communication be reduced to computation. Language models or LMs are a class of probabilistic models explicitly tailored to identify and learn statistical patterns in natural language. Because of their current success, they are seen commonly as models that comprehensively understand natural language, but surprisingly, they are trained with a quite a simple logic. One of the main problems of training a very large model like this is of course quality data. Large language models avoid this problem by using self-supervised learning. In the context of natural language processing, self-supervised learning enables models to learn from unannotated text rather than relying on manually labeled data, which is relatively scarce and often expensive. During the training process, a language model is fed with a large corpus or dataset of text and is tasked with predicting the next word in a sentence. As the model iterates through numerous examples, it learns to recognize and internalize various linguistic patterns, rules, and relationships between words and concepts. One can say that via this process, the model creates an internal representation of language. The outcome of this training process is a pre-trained language model. By the exposure to diverse linguistic patterns, the model now has a foundational understanding for natural language and for generating contextually appropriate and coherent text. Some people refer to such pre-trained models as foundation models. But a pre-trained model cannot yet be used for advanced use cases. Next step is to further upskill a pre-trained model for a very specific task or to refine and adapt this non-specialized knowledge for a specialized domain. And the way to do that is through a process called fine-tuning. Fine-tuning involves further training the pre-trained model on a smaller task-specific labeled dataset using supervised learning. A relatable example is machine translation, where a pre-trained language model can be fine-tuned on a parallel corpus containing sentences in the original and the target language. Through this process, the model learns to map the linguistic structures and patterns between the two languages, ultimately enabling it to translate text effectively. Another common use of fine-tuning is to adapt a pre-trained model to technical or specialized knowledge domains, such as the medical or legal fields. For example, a pre-trained language model could be fine-tuned on a collection of legal documents to achieve tasks like understanding and summarization of legal agreements. By doing so, the model becomes proficient in handling the unique vocabulary, syntax, and stylistic conventions prevalent in that specific domain. This process of adapting pre-trained models to new tasks or domains is an example of transfer learning, a fundamental concept in modern deep learning. Transfer learning allows a model to leverage the knowledge gained from one task and apply it to another, and often with minimal additional training. To learn more about transfer learning, you can check out our video here. But how good can language models become? Let's take a look. So language models are based on artificial neural networks. In the context of LMs in particular, larger networks with more parameters have been shown to achieve better performance. Essentially, a higher number of parameters allows the model to internalize a greater variety of statistical patterns within the language data they are exposed to. On the flip side, larger models require more computational resources and training data to reach their full potential. If you'd like to learn more about neural networks and how they learn, you can check out this video before you continue. Modern language models are composed of various components or blocks, often formed by different neural networks, each designed to perform specific tasks and featuring specialized architectures. Nearly all current LMs are based on a particularly successful choice of architecture, the transformer model invented in 2017. Starting from the field of natural language processing, transformers have been revolutionizing all areas of applied AI. Two components are key to the success, the attention mechanism and word embeddings. Word embeddings are high dimensional vector representations of words that capture their semantic and syntactic properties. These representations enable the model to numerically manipulate words in a mathematical space. Attention mechanisms allow the model to weigh the importance of different words or phrases in the text. This helps the model to selectively focus on specific parts of the input, assigning different attention scores to the words based on their relevance to the task at hand. To learn more about word embeddings and attention mechanisms, you might want to check out our dedicated videos. Transformer-based language models employ an encoder-decoder architecture to process and generate text. The encoder takes in text and encodes it into a numerical, high-dimensional, geometrically and statistically meaningful representation. The decoder takes in such a representation 
and decodes it back into text. Depending on the task, a language model might use only the encoder part, the decoder part, or both. Some examples of these distinction are the BERT model only uses the encoder part of a transformer and is best at performing any sort of prediction or classification task given a input text. The GPD model is decoder only and is best suitable for tasks that involve generation of novel text. And for a variety of tasks, having both the encoder and the decoder would be useful. In most machine translation models, the decoder processes the source language text while the decoder is responsible for generating the translated text in target language. Are language models going to keep getting bigger? In recent years, the development of language models have been characterized by a dramatic increase in size as measured by number of parameters. This trend began with models like the original GPT and ELMO, which had millions of parameters, and progressed to models like BERT and GPT-2 with hundreds of millions of parameters. Some of the latest models like Megatron, Turing, NLG, and Google's Palm have already surpassed 500 billion parameters. To put it differently, this means that in the span of the last four years only, the size of the LLMs has repeatedly doubled every two and a half months on average. A side note here, Although it is really hard to estimate how much it costs to train a language model, informed estimates are in the range of 10 to 20 million US dollars for the pre-training of a model like Palm using customer cloud services. Of course, this figure is only representative for the cost of the final model pre-training and excludes all the costly engineering, research and testing involved behind these complex systems. So chances are we will keep seeing bigger models rolled out this year despite the cost of training. However, it was recently shown that another really important factor to contribute to model performance is the dataset size, which raises the question, how much data do we need to train our language models with? Previously, it was believed that increasing the model size was the most effective way to get a better model performance, whereas increasing the dataset size was not deemed as important. However, more recent research has shown that many of the current LLMs are in fact, significantly undertrained with respect to the amount of data seen during pre training. Contrary to previous research, the latest work showed that for best model performance, every time the number of parameters doubles, the data size should also double. This new insight points to the possibility that the amount of training data needed for training is going to be the true fundamental bottleneck for these AI systems. Luckily so far, language models have managed to see improvements in their performance, mainly by increasing the model size. Furthermore, on top of being able to do what they're designed to do, which is to calculate probability distributions over words, the training process of large language models have been observed to give rise to fascinating qualitative behaviors. Empirical studies have found that as LLMs are scaled, they are able to suddenly unlock new capabilities that seem to emerge in a discontinuous manner, in contrast to the more predictable linear improvement of quantitative metrics. Remarkably, LLMs acquired these skills through the mere observation of recurring patterns in natural language during the training process, that is, without explicit task-specific supervision. You can refer to our recent blog post to learn more. A striking fact is that these emergent abilities are sometimes accessible through the language models by simply prompting it with the correct query. For instance, an LLM can be prompted with a passage followed by a request for summarization, and it will generate a concise summary of the given text. However, in many instances, pre-trained LLMs fail to properly follow the prompts. For example, if prompted with a question like, what is the capital of France? The model might respond with another question such as, what is the capital of Italy? because it has perhaps picked up this pattern from some lists of questions or quizzes on the internet. To address this issue, researchers have developed a simple strategy called instruction tuning. This technique involves training the LLM on a small dataset of examples that consists of prompts or instructions followed by the correct actions. By fine-tuning the model on these examples, usually very few per task, it learns to better understand and follow instructions given in natural language. Some of these tasks can in fact be performed more effectively by large, scaled models that have acquired these abilities by mere exposure to diverse data and subsequently unlock them via a relatively simple instruction tuning. With the increasing popularity of general purpose chatbots like ChatGPT, millions of people have now access to exceptionally powerful large language models. It is crucial to ensure that these models are not used for malicious purposes and that they are designed to decline any prompts that can lead to harm.
In light of all of this, it might seem surprising that one particular technique, reinforcement learning from human feedback, has emerged as a single methodology that can, in principle, address these safety issues, making significant strides in aligning LLMs with human values. To learn more about reinforcement learning from human feedback, you can go check out our video. Although we have delved into the essence of large language models and the main ideas behind them, there is still a wealth of interconnected topics waiting to be explored. We will be discussing these topics in future blog posts and videos, so follow us on Twitter, on YouTube, and go check out our blog also to catch the latest of deep learning. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.